It was really drastic, um, actually. Like, when I cried out to God, as soon as I said those words, you know, just take my life and do whatever you want with it, you know, I said I can't live like this anymore, I instantly felt a hand come down into my heart and started ripping all these things out of my heart. And I didn't know what was happening, but I felt like my heart was being emptied. And then it was like once everything was emptied out, I felt something come in there and it stayed there. And I didn't know at the time, you know, what that was. Now I know that was the Holy Spirit. But at the time, I had no clue what was happening. But I just felt something come into my heart and it stayed there. Welcome to Along the Way. I'm John Matarazza, your host and fellow traveler. Thank you for joining me along my way as I try to become more like Jesus every day. For this episode, I'm joined again by Dan Perkins, but this time his wife, Amy, shares her story. 2020 has brought a lot of changes for Dan and Amy Perkins, but they are excited to see where God is leading them. I'll get to our conversation in just a moment, but as always, I wanna thank you for listening to Along the Way. I hope that you like what you hear and that you'll subscribe. You can connect with me online as well. All of my socials and contact links are in my show notes, and you can check out all of my episodes at my website, alongtheway.media. There's an easy way to join my email list and find out more about me too. I hope that you check it out and you connect with me. I would love to hear from you. I also have a Patreon page if you would like to help me to continue to put out these Along the Way episodes. If you'd like to become a Patreon, simply go to patreon.com slash alongtheway and select a level. The link to become a Patreon supporter is in my show notes. And now, here's my Along the Way conversation with Amy and Dan Perkins. Dan and Amy Perkins, it's great to have you on Along the Way. Dan, it's good to have you back. Yeah, good to be here with you, John. Thank you You were my first episode. Thanks so much for doing that. And we did a quarantine checkup Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime as well, because during this whole COVID thing, life has changed drastically and Mm -hmm. we're going to talk about how life has changed for you and your lovely wife amy who i said i wanted to talk to back whenever we did your episode Mm -hmm. but we just haven't had the quite the chance but now you guys are in the midst of starting something new of your own and we wanted to talk about that but i want to hear amy's story because we heard Dan's side of things, but now we want to we, we want to know the truth. <laughs> no, so so Amy, I, I'm just joking. Dan Dan is a very truthful guy. There's no worries about anything that he said. But uh, Amy, I want to hear about your along the way journey with the Lord and how God has brought you to where you are today. I did not grow up in a Christian home, um, so I didn't know you know anything about God. Never really heard about Jesus. Um, We went to church maybe a few times, you know, as a kid, but that was Mm -hmm. about it. Right. Um, So I just grew up in the world, and that's what I knew. You know, my parents, they got divorced when I was really little, around two, and so it was just me and my mom, and, you know, I never really had a relationship with my dad. He was never really in my life, and so... um, That was something that was hard for me as a kid Mm -hmm. um, to understand or try to make sense of. Um, And where did you grow up? Where was that? I I grew up here in In Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, I've always been in Pittsburgh. Okay. So a single parent home. Didn't really have much to do with your dad. No, not my real dad. Um, My mom did get remarried. And so I did have a stepdad that I did live with for um, probably about 10 years. Mm -hmm. But there was really no relationship there either, and so I never really felt like I had a dad Hmm. or had a father, you know. And so that was something that was difficult for me. You know, like, it was a big source of pain for me as a kid. Sure, yeah. And I had a lot of anger about that. I had a lot of confusion about that. And I didn't really have, you know, anyone to guide me through those things. And so I started partying early, around Hmm. 13. Oh, wow. Uh, well, when you say partying, what mm-hmm. does that what does that look like? Drinking, getting high. With friends from school? Like, how did you meet these people that you're hanging out with? Yeah, friends from school. Okay. Um, just started hanging out with a different group of people and just started doing what they did. And I kind of just did it at first, like, as I kind of just gave in to peer pressure, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. But then I found it that it was a way that I could not feel how I was feeling. And so it really just became 
you know, a source of like escape for me and a way to have fun okay. and actually laugh and have a good time and not always feel the way I felt. What was it that you were feeling that you wanted to escape from? Um, I struggled with depression a lot. I did always have like a very low view of myself. Um, and I think a lot of that came from not really knowing my dad or him not being around. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand, you know, why he didn't want to be a part of my life, why he didn't want to bother with me. And so I kind of took that on myself mm. and thought, you know, well, there must be something wrong with me mm. that my dad doesn't want to be in my life. And so that's just kind of how I viewed myself sure. and had those like beliefs about myself. And so that just led to a really low view of me. Um, I feared rejection a lot. And so that's just kind of how I, what I believed about myself. And that probably caused a lot of my depression, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. So as a 13 year old, all this was going on in your life mm -hmm. and you found out that drugs was a way to kind of deaden that pain. Right. Am I right in saying that you felt like it helped you become the true you. Tell me what was, what kept drawing you back there other than just deadening the pain? Uh, that was pretty much it. Yeah. I never actually felt like I could be me. Mm -hmm. Um, because I did fear that if I was ever like truly myself, people wouldn't actually want to be around me or, you know, be friends with me or whatever. And so it really was just a way to numb how I felt and not have to deal with those feelings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I didn't really know how to. And so that just was a way to not deal with them and be okay with that. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So how long did, were you living in that, in that life? Cause I mean, 13 seems to me, that seems pretty young to get started with that. Mm -hmm. Not compared to your husband here who started right. <laughs> even, even younger than that, but uh, you got to go back to episode one of this podcast to hear Dan Perkins story. But what, what was happening in, in your life? How long did this whole season of life last? Uh, well, until I got saved, you know, when I was 20. Okay, so, so seven years. Yeah. Yeah, and so it progressed, you know, over the years. It started out as just, you know, a fun thing. It seemed kind of innocent, but it progressed and became something that I had to do in order to get through my days mm -hmm. and be able to deal with life or not deal with life. <laughs> and so... Um, you know, eventually my drinking became really out of control and it really changed me and I became a really different person. Mm -hmm. I became just someone like I used to always have some type of values or knew like what made me me, what made me not me, this is who I am, this is who I'm not, you know, and I didn't really know that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I became really lost in alcohol and... um I was very dark inside. I just, I ended up, you know, getting in situations I never thought I would be in. Mm -hmm. And at 19, I ended up getting pregnant mm -hmm. and having an abortion. That destroyed me yeah. as a person. Yeah. I never thought I would be in a situation like that. And I certainly didn't want to have to make that choice but at the time I felt like I didn't really have one that that was my only option but it really did destroy my soul hmm. and it broke me um, so much that I just I wasn't able to go on from there um, at that point it was like I was broken beyond repair hmm. um, I was covered in so much shame from what I had done. And I realized, you know, afterwards what I had really done. Right. I don't think I really realized or allowed myself to realize, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, in the midst of it, because I was so scared sure. and, you know, didn't know what to do. Um, but when it was all said and done and it was over and I felt the effects on my soul from it, I knew what I had done. You know, and I knew that that really was a life and that it had been taken from me. Like I, I've never felt so empty hmm. in my life as I did then. And so it, um, it wasn't, I wasn't able to bear it. Hmm. Um, I was 
I felt sick all the time inside. I was extremely depressed. Um, you know, everywhere I went, I just felt like everyone knew what I did. I couldn't look anybody in the mm -hmm. eye. You know, like I was just covered in shame. And so um, it just, it got to the point where I was afraid to, you know, go to sleep at night because I was afraid that I was actually going to die in my sleep from my spirit being so broken. Wow. And so I just, I, I didn't know how to go on every day from this point. Like at this point, um, this, is, this wasn't something that drugs and alcohol could wash away. Mm -hmm. Like this wasn't something that I could just get high enough, get drunk enough, and this will numb this pain. Mm -hmm. That wasn't possible at this point. And so I was working, and I um, one day when I went into work, there was a guy there, and they said he was going to be working with me. And it turns out this guy was a Christian. Hmm. And um, I don't think it took long for him to see, like, my condition, because yeah. I, I wasn't really able to hide it. I was I was a mess. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he just slowly started talking to me. And, you know, um, the one day he asked me, you know, if I believed in God. And... You know, I felt something hit my heart when he said it. And I said, yeah, because I did. Mm -hmm. But then he said, well, do you know him personally? And I said, no. Yeah, you're probably confused. Like, what does that mean? Like, how do you, yeah. know, how do you personally know God? Yeah, I didn't know what that meant, but I felt something in my heart when he said it. Right. And, um, and so he just, like, spent that evening talking to me, and I don't even know what he said to me, but I was really grateful. Mm -hmm. And when I went home that night, I was staying with a friend, and I told her, I said, this guy is going to change my life. Hmm. Like, I could feel that something was happening. And um, so from there, he just, he would spend all day just talking to me and telling me, like, little stories about God. Um, he never preached at me. He never even told me about Jesus. He hmm. never quoted scripture to me. He almost like spoke to me in like little parables. Okay. Just kind of pointing me towards something, like pointing me towards God and like showing me that he was good. Like that was the message I received from him, that God was good. I could have faith in him. Mm -hmm. And so this went on for several weeks, maybe. Um, and then one day I went into work and they said that he wasn't coming back, that his assignment was over. And Was he just like a temp or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so he just wasn't there anymore. And um, But he had sown something into me that I didn't even realize, but I started saying my prayers again at night. You know, at one point I did ask God to forgive me mm -hmm. um, because I knew at that point I was no longer a good person. And I thought I was going to hell. And I asked my mom, you know, am I going to go to hell? Hmm. And she wasn't even a Christian at the time, but she told me, she said, well, Amy, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And so I did. I confessed my sin to God and I asked him to forgive me, but nothing happened. Hmm. And... So when this guy started talking to me and I was kind of feeling like I was gaining some kind of faith, I started saying my prayers again at night. Okay. Um, and I just said the Our Father, like that was the only prayer I ever sure, knew. Sure, sure, yeah. And so I just said that every night. Still a good one, yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, and then when he wasn't there anymore, it wasn't long after that that, you know, I cried out to God on my own. Um, surrendering my life. Mm -hmm. And that's when a change took place. And so I think that's something important to note that like when I asked God to forgive me, you know, I was just pretty much trying to, I didn't want to go to hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that was kind of my prayer, like God forgive me because I don't want to go to hell. Right. And nothing happened with that. But when I prayed surrendering my life to him, that's when a change took place on the inside of me. So what happened when you did that? You said there was a change that took place inside mm -hmm. of you. Tell me about that change. So my prayer was just, God, take my life and do whatever you want with it. 
you know, I said, I can't live like this anymore. And I meant that with mm-hmm. everything in me, in me. It was like either God had to save me or I was done because yeah. I wasn't able to go on anymore. So when you say that, or were you thinking of ending your own life or like how, how bad was I never this depression? thought about that, but I knew that I couldn't go on. So okay. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You know, really, um, I never really thought about suicide, but I knew I couldn't continue. Like something had to be done. So you're, you're 20 years old at this point. I was 19 or 20. 19 or 20. Yeah. So drugs and alcohol are a regular part of your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How regular would you say? Every day. Every day. Yeah. I couldn't go through a day sober. I didn't know how to function, honestly, Mm -hmm. without being messed up in some way, shape, or form. Like, that was normal to me. Wow. So you were a functioning alcoholic. You were a functioning drug addict. Like, your your average person probably didn't know because you just hit it well. Right. It's just who I was. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. That's just who I was and how I was. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, they can't hold down a job, but that's where God brought this guy into your life for that short period of time to be an example of what a Christian would look like. And then he inspired you to seek the Lord on your Mm -hmm. own. So you went from having drugs and alcohol every single day, pretty much, to this change. How drastic was the change? What what happened from that day? It was really drastic, um, actually. Like, when I cried out to God, um, as soon as I said those words, you know, just take my life and do whatever you want with it. You know, I said, I can't live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. I instantly felt a hand come down into my heart and started ripping all these things out of my heart. And Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was happening, but I felt like my heart was being emptied. And then it was like once everything was emptied out, I felt something come in there and it stayed there. (laughs) <laughs> and I didn't know at the time, you know, what that was. Now I know right. that was the Holy Spirit. But yeah. at the time, I had no clue what was happening. But I just felt something come into my heart, and it stayed there. And then it was just like I could see. Like, it was like being, like, blindfolded, like, my whole life, and it was just removed. Hmm. And it was just like all of a sudden I could see, and I could see so clearly. And I saw, like how I blamed, like, everybody for my life. Mm. And, like, for the first time, like, I saw, like, it was me. Mm. Like, I was the problem. And, you know, I know that doesn't sound like good news, but actually to me it was because it was, for the first time ever, like, I was taking responsibility for myself. Mm. But I was just never the same after that. Like, I called my mom and I was like, you have to come down here. Like, something has happened to me. And I told her all about it, and she said that, you know, she's been praying for me, and Mm. God has been waiting for me. Um, But I was never the same after that day. I didn't uh, want to get high anymore. I didn't want to drink anymore. You know, like, for the first time, like, I had something on the inside of me that was good, and I didn't want to drown that out with drugs and alcohol and so it was a pretty instant change like from one day to the next I was just a different person and I had joy and I was talking about God and I didn't want to drink anymore and everyone's like you know what happened to Amy and you know and I didn't really have an explanation I didn't really know what happened to me then um, other than you know I asked God to take my life It was God, and that was all I knew. So it wasn't until, you know, somebody gave me a Bible. I guess I was talking about God a lot, and one of the kids I partied with was like, well, here, you know, you can have this. He was like, I'm not going to read this, and he gave me his Bible. So you weren't partying anymore, or were you still going there? No, I mean, this just happened. It was pretty recent, so yeah. But no, I wasn't wanting to get high anymore. I Mm -hmm. wasn't wanting to drink anymore, and so... A kid gave me his Bible, and I took it home, and one day I started to read it. And I started reading in Matthew, because I always remember hearing, like, St. Matthew, and that's just from, like, the Catholic Church, and that's all I knew. And so I started there, and um, that turned out to be the beginning of the New Testament. And Mm -hmm. so I read, and I was just amazed at all the things I was reading. I never knew, you know, all those stories about Jesus. I didn't 
know all those miracles he did. I didn't know about the cross. And so I'm reading all this for the first time. And I understood it, though. And I just kept reading. And I read the whole way through the New Testament. Hmm. And so as I was reading in John, like I found out, you know, that Jesus was God. And then as I was reading into Corinthians and it talked about, you know, when you're in Christ, you're a new creation Mm -hmm. and the old things have passed away and the new things have come. And I was like, oh, well, that's what happened to me. And so that's how I found out that actually like that I became a born again Christian you know, I didn't know what right, that right. meant or anything before that. That's wild. Yeah, I was just never the same after that. I did lose most of my friends. Mm. You know, most people thought I found some kind of religion or was in some kind of cult or something like that, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but really, you know, God saved my life. Mm. And he forgave me and he cleansed me and he washed away my shame and I didn't want to let that go. Like yeah. I wanted to hold on to that with everything. Yeah. So, so you didn't have a Christian upbringing. No. So you went to church rarely when you did. Just a few times. So you you told your mom what was going on, mm-hmm. and she actually gave you some wisdom about that, which is really, really pretty cool. So that says that God was doing something in her life too. My my question to you, kind of like after this whole experience with the Lord and giving your, giving your life to him, how did you start growing in your faith? Because, you know, it's not good to walk alone. So how did you start? How did you find other Christians? How did you figure out what it was that you actually believed and wanted to, wanted to get to church and wanted to get involved? Like, tell me about that next, that next step of how God led you. So I actually didn't want to go to church. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I was one of those, (laughs) I was one of those people, um, the, you had a very bad view of church. And so okay. even after coming to Christ, I still don't even know if I understood everything. You know, I just knew I was a new person. Um, but one of my friends... I think we're all figuring that out all the time. We don't understand yeah. everything. But yeah, so we're, yeah. we're all in the same boat no matter what stage we're in <laughs> in that regard. Yeah. So one of my friends did... he Somebody I partied with, he did go to church. And he was like, well, you should come to my church sometime. And I was like, well, you know, I really didn't want to, and I didn't understand why I should go, mm-hmm. to be honest. But eventually I did go. I didn't grow there, mm-hmm. to be honest. See, luckily for me, I actually read the Bible before I got into church. And so I read through the New Testament. And mm-hmm. then when I went into church, um, I would hear some things that didn't sound right to me. Or like, well, I remember reading that, but I didn't know that that's what that meant. And so it turned out to be a church that kind of taught more along the prosperity lines. Okay. And that actually messed me up Mm. pretty bad as a Christian because I was so new. Mm -hmm. And I did read through the scriptures, but only once. And so I didn't know how to properly interpret a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so I would hear things at church and it would confuse me a lot. And then I would go home and read the Bible, and I didn't see the same two things. And so Hmm. I became very confused. Sure. And I actually backslid. I actually started partying again Hmm. because I just had no clue, really, like what was going on. I didn't have Christians around me to help me. Mm -hmm. And so my old friends was all I knew. But after so long, like I did leave that church because Mm -hmm. I realized it wasn't good for me. And my cousin invited me to her church. And it turned out that turned out to be a very solid church that taught scripture and taught truth. Mm -hmm. And so once I got in there and I experienced that, um, I, you know, never went back. I just continued to move forward from there. I just grew. And so it really took getting into a healthy church that really taught the scriptures the way they're supposed to Mm -hmm. be taught or the way they really were meant to be. And I had a pastor who, you know, would take time to talk with me. I still didn't have Christian friends like my age. It was a lot of older people, Mm -hmm. but they had Saturday night services. They had Sunday morning services. And I went to both, you know, anytime I could be there, I was there. Yeah. And I actually learned a lot from the older people, the people that were a lot older than me. They were able to pass down a lot of wisdom to me that, you know, I probably couldn't get from people my same age. Mm -hmm. And so... I just was there all the time, and I learned from them, and I learned from my pastor. I asked them questions. I asked a lot of questions, actually. Asking you know, questions is very good. Yeah. 
Yeah. I asked a lot of questions and they took time with me. You know, they took time with me. So. Do you remember any of those questions that you asked the pastors? I mean, none in particular. It was just as I was reading, like, well, what does this parable mean? Who's he talking to here? You know, you know, cause just reading the scriptures sometimes, like if you don't know the background to it or, you know, the content around it, mm-hmm. it could sound like, well, whoa, like what's that mean? You know? Yeah. And so I had to ask questions, like, and people would help me understand, well, at this time, this is what was going on, and this is why he wrote this, or this was the time frame, or... So they just helped like you that. understand the context yes. more, and yeah. that's great. Mm-hmm. And that's a really important thing to do, that a lot of people don't take that extra step to do. Mm-hmm. And Dan, I know we can talk about this, because you, you're you a lover of the Word and studying, but this is still Amy's story, so just hold off a second. <laughs> but, oh, well. um, but yeah, it is. there's so many times that people just don't take that extra step and they just hear the word uh, from that's being preached and that's it. Mm-hmm. And they don't dig in and then they don't even apply it. So I applaud you for doing that, Amy. I really do because that, that shows a hunger and that shows that there was a character being developed in you mm-hmm. from a younger age. Mm-hmm. Now you, you made mention earlier that at you were working and God brought somebody into your, in, you know, to work with you that, uh, you know, eventually was the catalyst for you, accepting Jesus, but even though he might have not actually done that, like he, he didn't lead you in the prayer, but God used him to set you up. But I know that God brought somebody else through work into your life too. Can we talk mm-hmm. about that? <laughs> yeah. So once I got saved, I quit, you know, coming around my old friends. And so I didn't see anybody for a really long time, um, just simply because I didn't party anymore. And so one day when I was at work, this was at a different place You know, I was sitting in my computer, this was several years later, um, and I saw Dan, Mm -hmm. you know, walk through the hall. And I was like, hey, I know that kid, you know, we used to party together Uh all the time. And so I sent him an email and I was like, hey, you know, remember me? This is Amy. We used to party down in Oakland. And so he responded. And so we just met one day for lunch. You know, I could tell he was still in his partying uh-huh. stage yep. <laughs> and I wasn't, you mm-hmm. know, and so we were very different at this point talking with each other. Right. You know, um, but we had lunch a couple of times and somehow it came up, you know, I don't know if I brought it up or he asked, but I told him, well, I'm a Christian now and I've been sober for, you know, this many years mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, God has changed my life. And so that started a whole different conversation right, with us and right. him asking me questions and things like that. And I invited him to a Bible study that I was going to. I was like, Hey, it's down the street. You know, if you ever want to come and he came the one time. Yeah. And so that's how we started hanging out and how we got like reconnected. Mm-hmm. So Dan, mm-hmm. what was going through your mind whenever you got that email from Amy? Yeah, I was I was surprised. Um I had I did remember her. Um I remember I used to have a crush on her. Oh. Back, okay. Back in the day. And so I was like, wow, this is this is re- this is really cool. And so I I sat down with her at that lunch and when I saw her, I instantly knew that there was something different. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like I I didn't know she had become a born again believer. I didn't know anything about that. I just knew that there was something different about her. She had, you know, life in her face and she, you know, she was all smiley and stuff. And so I, she just appeared different. Right. And so uh, when she told me she became a Christian, you know, I was like, oh, OK. And she was like, I, well, I don't, you know, party anymore. I don't get high. I don't drink or any of that stuff. And so and you were probably thinking, I, well, there goes my chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I was. But I was still, I was like enamored with her. I was mm-hmm. just, you know, I, I just wanted to know more about this and about what happened to her. Because at this point in my addiction, I was pretty desperate right. for mm-hmm. a change myself. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you know, even though I thought she was cute and I, I just wanted to spend more time with her, I was, I, I was really genuinely interested in, in changing. Mm. Um, I just didn't know how, and right. I didn't have the tools, the resources or anything to change. And so, mm-hmm. um, when she invited me to the Bible study, I was like, what, what do I really have to lose at this <laughs> yeah, point? Yeah. Like, you know, and so, 
Um, she took me to the Bible study. Uh, we, I met her there and, you know, we just opened the Bible and just started reading it. And, and you know, something started clicking inside of me. And so we would just um, get together and we would just all read the Bible for hours. I mean, hours at a so time. I was, is... I was still getting high and everything, <laughs> but I, we would just sit there and I Why would Why are just... you hanging out with this loser? <laughs> 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 and so, but I mean, we would, we would all sit down. I, we would go to this Bible study. Uh-huh. Uh, we would go to this church and, um, and the, the, everybody there would welcome me in and we would, they would just open the Bible and they would just read the Bible to me. And mm-hmm. I, we, would, we would just read the Bible literally for hours and hours at a time. And I slowly, very slowly, yeah, like started feeling something inside of me, like, changing uh, yeah. you know what i mean i, yeah. I still you know i was on some very serious drugs so i wasn't able i didn't have that same experience where i was just able to quit that right. but i knew i wanted to at this mm-hmm. point and so i'll never forget it i don't think i told you this story in the first podcast but i'll <laughs> never forget it we were all sitting at the kitchen table um one evening and um there was windows all around the 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 kitchen and so you could see all outside and everything and there was a really bad thunderstorm and we were reading the bible and i remember thunder crashed like it was just a really loud thunder and just a fear came over me Hmm. like a fear like if i died right now Hmm. i know i'd go to hell like there was no like if and buts about it like and fear and dread came over me like i need I need out of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, I like a, this fear of God just came over me, like I, yeah. I had never experienced before in my life, and that's when it, we started moving towards. Yeah, I started moving towards that decision. Like, so at, at this point, you're reading the Bible, you're mm-hmm. coming to a, a small group, and you're going to church, mm-hmm. and you realize that that's not enough. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, a- absolutely. It, it it brought me to a place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it it can lead you to the water. Mm-hmm. But it can't make you yeah. drink, and so, um, and you know that water is the Holy Spirit, and, yeah. and, and you got to you got to be able to receive that. And so order. God was God was using Amy to bring you to that place where you're in front of the water yourself. Mm-hmm. And so we, we've heard your story, but I want to hear Amy's side of this too. So I'm going to try oh, yeah. to work both of you guys <laughs> oh, into yeah. this. So, Amy, what is going on as you're seeing what's happening in this guy's life that? is eventually your future husband. But uh, were you thinking about that during that time? What's what's going on? So it got to be kind of a, a messy situation. Um, that's, that's saying it lightly. That's just being polite. <laughs> because we did start dating. Mm-hmm. And I knew that he wasn't a Christian. But at the same time, I kind of felt God like bringing us together Mm -hmm. and so it was very strange because i thought well why would i date him when he's not a christian and you know so it it became this thing but i thought well i'll give it a try and we'll see what happens here you know and so we did start dating i didn't know that he was currently you know an addiction i knew that he wasn't completely sober but Mm -hmm. i didn't know the extent of it there were signs of things, but I never got into those kinds of harder drugs, so I sure. didn't really know what I was dealing with. And so there were signs and things, but you know he was able to explain some things away, and I didn't really know, so mm-hmm. I was kind of naive and to some lie. things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at the same time, um, I did see that he wanted something. Yeah, I did see that. I saw the struggle in him. I saw the struggle of wanting to be different, but not being able to get out. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that this is something that he wanted, but he was not there yet. Sure. But the further we went on, the further, the longer we dated, um, more things came out. You know, there was more lying and Mm -hmm. things like that that came with the addiction and, so eventually, eventually, it came out what was really going on, what he was really into, what the real situation was. Mm-hmm. And um, I realized, you know, this, I'm not able to handle this or be in this. Right. 
yeah, it got it got to a place where I knew I couldn't be in this mm-hmm. anymore, and that I don't think that um, God meant for us to be in like the situation that we were. I think we kind of got in the way of what maybe God's intent was in bringing us. Because at, at that point, together. you were you would have been unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it was just extremely unhealthy with the addiction. And Mm -hmm. with his addiction, I realized a lot of things about myself that I didn't even know were there, such as, you know, I was trying to kind of save him Mm. and I was trying to kind of rescue him out of his addiction. And so there was a lot of stuff that came into it. And so when it all came out, you know, the truth of it, I broke it off told him I couldn't be with him anymore and that's when he just he got into a rehab Mm. when she finally like cut it off like Amy was really like the only good thing in my life at that Mm -hmm. time and so when she actually stood her ground and cut it off I think that's when it was like a smack in the face for me like Mm. okay like, the only good thing that I've experienced in the last, like, you know, almost 18 years of my life um, has now left, is now, like, you know, I, I ruined right. this. I said, okay, I, I, I got to do something. And so I had tried to go to rehab one time before. I, you know, I, I went through the program, went to a halfway house for a little bit, but, I, you know, I checked myself out earlier. I, I just wasn't, I wasn't there. I wasn't ready. I didn't necessarily I, I just wasn't at the place mm-hmm. where i was ready to surrender yet mm-hmm. and so when i got back out and then all that happened um but when she had finally like stood her ground and cut it off and just said hey listen i can't be with you anymore um that was when it was like oh you know what uh, something something has to give right, right and so i remember she actually was like hey listen i'll drive you to the rehab um you know she drove mm-hmm. me there and i remember like i remember it very vividly When I got out of that car, like, and my feet hit the ground, I said, something about this is different. Something about this time is really different. Like, I really wanted to change, and I was really willing to do whatever it took Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to change. And that's when I cried out to God myself on the the floor of a drug rehabilitation facility. So... You eventually took him back because you guys are married now and you've got two kids. So that took some work. It took some work. Okay. Yeah. It, took some work. it took some work. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So he called me and told me, you know, like. Well, you had told me never to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, you had told me, you're I like, did. listen, don't call me. Don't contact me. I, I, this is it. Like, oh, I'm dropping was like off. really serious. Yeah, it it was wasn't like, just yeah. tough love. It was like, like yeah. we're like, done. Well, this we're was done. the second time. So I, yeah. I was done at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, but. He, I don't know if you wrote me a letter or you called and he told me that, you know, he gave his life to Christ and, you know, yeah. he was different. And I didn't, you know, I didn't believe anything sure. he had to say at this point. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't really pay much attention to it. But I don't know if he kept, you know, eventually calling or writing letters. I don't really know how we started actually talking again. Mm-hmm. But at one point we did hang out and I could see that there was something different about him. Yeah. I didn't want to tell him that or admit it, you know, because I was still very on guard. Sure. And, you know, I need to make sure. And I'm sure there were sure. some reasons that you were on guard. Too. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. she needed to be. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, at, he went to a three-quarter house, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. was staying at a three-quarter house. And I told him that the only way that I would consider dating again is if, you know, he was there for, like, at least six months so that I knew that he was clean sure. you know, because yeah. he had to get drug tested. He had right. to go to meetings. He had to do certain things in order to be there. And so I needed proof, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. he was truly clean. Mm-hmm. And over that time, I think we went, we went to church sometimes together. Like we did hang out a few times and I could see that there was something different about him. Yeah. And I knew that he had the Holy Spirit in him. Hmm. And so I, but I stood behind what I said, the six (laughs) months thing. And so he Mm -hmm. stayed there even when he didn't want to. Um, He stayed there for that time. And after six months of him being clean and me seeing a visible change in him and just even in his character. And I remember him telling me like, Amy, whatever you need, I'll do. And just things like that that were different from 
the manipulation I experienced mm. prior. So there was a there was definitely a real change that There's had taken place change. that I saw. Yeah. And so after the six months, we did start to date again. And, I mean, it was just obvious that he was a different person. Mm -hmm. I never would have started dating him again if I would not have been so confident yeah. that he was different. And that mm -hmm. I saw that he was, there was a true change that mm -hmm. took place. That he really did have the Holy Spirit in him. And so I felt comfortable after that period of time starting sure. to date again. Mm -hmm. And so how now we're talking about you guys as a couple because mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. got married. When did you guys get married? After a year after I had gotten mm -hmm. clean. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was after a year. So it was probably, it was in 2011. Okay. Um, and so I got uh, We started clean dating in, in 2009. 2009. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was a number of period after after I had been clean. I was, you know, in a local church. Mm -hmm. I was in Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, was gainfully employed, which, you know, doesn't <laughs> sound like much to people. But for me to be able to, like, keep a job yeah. for longer than a year was a substantial victory for me in my life. And so, I mean, in, in, yeah. in our first interview, we talked about some of the. Yeah. I mean, some of the pizza jobs that you ha that you couldn't keep yeah. and things like that. And so yeah. for you to be gainfully employed mm -hmm. is a miracle of right. God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And he opened up, you know, so many doors for me and just really had, had blessed me beyond what I deserved mm -hmm. for sure. And so that that's kind of how we got together. And, you know, it's funny looking back at it now, like as a pastor, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as, as a pastor and being like, I would never, ever like counsel somebody to do <laughs> what we did. <laughs> oh, gosh, I, yeah. you know, just like, don't don't do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't do what we did, because um, there was there was definitely some some, you know, tough times in that. But also, like, God has, can take the worst situations mm -hmm. and really redeem it. Yeah. And really use it for good. And so that's where we are now with, mm -hmm. with, our, with our story. Like, God has just completely redeemed it and restored yeah. everything that the enemy had taken from us. And, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and it's given us so much more than, like, we ever thought was would be possible. I mean, mm -hmm. to think about it and to think about where we are now and me as a pastor and her um you know and everything that she's doing as a mom i mean yeah. just like the, like most people take for granted the family you know what i mean but for like us we like we can sit back and look at our kids and be like this is the most amazing thing right. that there ever is because like we didn't ha we didn't have some of that stuff growing up and yeah. like you know our kids will never know what that's like like you know what I mean? Our kids will never know what it's like to not have a father. Mm. You know, they'll never know what it's like to not be loved and accepted for who they are, um, mm -hmm. and things like that. And so, that in and of itself is just a, beyond amazing to yeah. us. I love how you guys said that God has redeemed everything. Mm. Everything. And um, you know, you at one point you had an abortion, and now. You've been redeemed, and you have mm -hmm. two kids, two mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful children yeah. that mm -hmm. are, you know, I love seeing them run around to church. Seth cracks me up, some of the, the looks he gives people. <laughs> but uh, tell me about what God has spoken to you through being a mother. I know that's a big question, so you weren't expecting that one. Mm -mm. But, yeah, I'm just thinking about God's redemption and how, you know, he, he, he took a situation that was taken away from you, and mm -hmm. now he's restored double. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean... Probably just how beautiful life really is. I look at my kids, and it's just, it's amazing. Mm. Like, yeah, I don't know. I guess I understand how precious life is, now, mm. you know, and the fact that I get to have them and raise them, the fact that I'm sober mm. and I'm able to do that, like I'm able to take care of them. Um, is just such a blessing. Yeah. You know, it's such a blessing. That's good. Yeah, you know, one of the my, the most amazing thing is that God is, has given us two children that he's allowing us to help shape mm. and mold and point them to Christ, you know. And so, like, we get to model for them, you know, the gospel. And, like, 
you know, I think both of us growing up, the world is really what shaped and molded mm-hmm. us, mm-hmm. the world system, you know, and and so um, now that we, you know, have been redeemed and restored, like they're a part of this new line um, in our families that is like in the line of redemption, yeah. you know, and so they are enjoying the fruits of that. That's cool. You know, Amy, some of the questions that I normally ask during this podcast is, where, when you look back at your own life, where do you see Jesus walking with you that you didn't realize it during that time? But now you can look back and say, he, he was really there. I just didn't see it at that moment. He was really with me my whole life. Mm-hmm. And I, I had no clue, you know. But when he sent that guy to me, you know, I really believe that guy was like an angel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really do. And I really believe he was sent just for me. Yeah. Um, and that just shows me that that God was with me, that God saw me in the worst sins I could possibly be in, you know? Yeah. Um, I was drowning in my sins at that point, and yet he saw me, and he cared, and he sent somebody to me to help rescue me. Hmm. And so... Um, that's just amazing to me. That's amazing yeah. because he could have very easily, you know, shunned me. He could have very easily just punished me or judged me or turned away from me. But instead, he came to me mm-hmm. and he came to rescue me. And um, I just think that's the most amazing thing. It really is. Just seeing how Jesus will leave the 99 to go after that one. He really did. And he'll send somebody on a temporary assignment yeah where that guy yeah. I mean, how he was there for a few weeks mm-hmm. probably and that changed your life yeah and Forever. if you weren't working in that job at that time where that guy came in as a temp and mm-hmm. as you said he might have been an angel you know like god cares so much about us well just look at the effect that that one yeah. moment had that yep. one guy had and what him being a faithful witness like mm-hmm. being sent and allowing God to use him transformed her, right? Which in turn transformed Trans- me, exactly. Which mm-hmm. in turn is transforming our family and is transforming our kids, right? And just the effect of that, you know what I mean? Like that, I think that is so beautiful mm-hmm. that God did all of that, yeah, through one person, through one person. That's so cool. That's so cool. And just the fact that He cared about so someone like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was really a nobody. I was covered in my sins and he he loved me anyway yeah. and mm-hmm. he came to me. That's great. I love how good God is. He really is good. God loves us that much that he's willing to to send his son for us and he's willing to send somebody else to tell us about his son or demonstrate or just be that example that we need to, as Dan said earlier, you know, you can lead somebody to water, but you can't mm-hmm. make them drink. And, you know, it's our choice to, to drink. And I'm so glad that you did make that choice. A- another question that I love asking is if you could go back in time and visit young Amy, mm-hmm. you know, teenage or childhood Amy or wh- whatever season of life you want it to be, what advice would you give yourself? What's going on in that scene that you would need to receive that information from you or receive that encouragement from yourself? I would probably offer myself hope. That was the biggest thing probably for me is I had no hope. Mm -hmm. You know, I had no hope that things could be different here on this earth. Like for Mm -hmm. me, all I knew was pain and suffering and I had no way out of it. And so I just thought this is what life is. And it played a big part in my decision in having an abortion because mm. I had no hope. Like, I didn't know that this could change. I didn't know that this could turn around. I didn't know that God could come into my life mm. and make things different, you know. And so I had no way out. And so I would tell myself that things can be different here, that you could know God, that you can know God personally, that He can come into your life and He could change you and he can make you new and he can offer you hope and give you something to live for you know that this world 
and the pain and the suffering that's in it is not all there is. That doesn't have to be yeah. all there is. There's something beyond that that can be found in Christ. Mm, that's good. You know, I loved when you said that somebody, a friend of yours said, here's a Bible. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> you, uh, you just devoured it. You started in Matthew and you mm-hmm. read it yourself and you didn't rely on the word from somebody else. You made it your own. I always like asking people about their life first, something that's like God has just highlighted for you. And it's, it's something that you've been able to anchor to during difficult times. What, what's a verse that has really been like that for you? First Timothy is the scripture that I always use um, for my testimony. Mm. It's First Timothy one fifteen. It says, "This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it: that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. But God had mercy on me, so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of His great patience with even the worst of sinners." then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. And I just, this, this is my testimony, mm-hmm. you know, that I was the worst of sinners and this is why Christ came and he died for sinners and he had mercy on me, mm. you know, someone who didn't deserve it, but that's why he came. Yeah. I just feel like this scripture wraps up my testimony yeah. You know, it sums it up. Yeah, for sure. And that, you know, he can now use my story as an example is how he has patience and mercy with even the worst of sinners. And that if I can believe in him and receive eternal life, so can they or so mm-hmm. can anyone else. You know, Amy, that, that leads me into what I felt like God wanted me to ask you to do. Amy, would you speak to somebody that's listening that might be relating to more to that 19 year old Amy than the Amy that you are now, but they need that words of hope. Could you tell them about Jesus? I would say that there is hope in God and that you could trust him, that he loves you, that he wants to come into your life and make you new that he wants to give you hope and that he wants to set you free from the bondage that you've been in and that he is someone that you can know that he's someone that you that will walk with you that you could trust and that he could guide your daily life Mm -hmm. and that he really could give you something to live for something a hope beyond this world and beyond the pain and the suffering that this world offers that he can give you something greater than that that nobody can take from you Hmm. that's good you know if you relate to amy's story right now i want you to know that your life can change just like hers did that by making that decision to ask jesus to come into your life everything can change Mm -hmm. I love that Amy said it felt like God was messing with my heart Mm -hmm. and pushing things out and then filled me up. You know, God wants to do that for you right now, wherever you are, wherever, whatever situation you're in, God will reach you right where you are. If you let him in, he's going to be there. Jesus is, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way in. We have to welcome him in, but he is always there. If you want to make that decision that Amy did, that Dan has made, then I want to give you an opportunity to make that decision. And it it starts with a simple prayer. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. And it's it's a simple starting place. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot more to it down the road, but that is the first step you need to do. And it's the best step that you can do. So if you want to do that right now, I'm just going to give you the opportunity. Just repeat after me. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe that you, Jesus, died for my sins, that you took my place on the cross for me, that you didn't deserve that that torture and that pain and that suffering and that death. I did. 
but you took that for me. Jesus, I ask that you would forgive me of all of my sins and now to help me to live for you. I know that you're alive again, and I want to live for you from now on. So help me to do that. I love you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. Mm. You know, myself and Dan and Amy, we've all prayed prayers just like that one. There's not a magical prayer, but that prayer is really just an outflow of the heart of what, what is really going on inside of you. And it's a declaration to God to say, I want to give my life to you. And, um, you know, Dan has done that. Amy's done that. I've done that. And our lives have been greatly changed. And God has now instilled purpose in our lives that we're, our purposes are now bigger than the ones that we thought that they were. I do want to transition a little bit into the next phase of your stories because we're about to, uh, we're about to go on an adventure with that. But, um, Right now, before we get into that, if you prayed with me or you would like to talk more about that, please contact me. My email address is johnalongtheway at gmail.com, and I would love to tell you more about Jesus. I'd love to try to answer questions that you might have, and I can connect you with Dan and Amy. Um, I'll put their email addresses or contact in the show notes as well, so you can reach out to them directly. Dan and Amy, you guys are making a huge, huge leap of faith right now. Yes. We are actually meeting together today because you guys are starting a podcast of your own, Mm -hmm. which is super exciting. Yeah, we're excited. But that is just one part of the journey that God has you guys on right now. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me about this next phase where God has led you from, but where he's leading you to? You might not have all the pieces together, but what's going on? Yeah, so that's really what it is, is that God has really just been showing us piece by piece what he's really asking of us. And so, um, you know, just very recently, um, uh, in October of 2019, I started giving the, this wrestle that God, you know, might be asking us to to step down from where we are Um and as that, a pastor of a as church, a pastor, yeah. pastor at a church, and also that he's going to be calling us on to, to something else, which mm-hmm. is, you know, was really, really a, a strong wrestle. It was a strong fight that we, we were really putting up against God because we really loved the people where we were. I mean, we just, you know, we were, mm-hmm. we were comfortable there. Uh, we, we were loved, we were respected, and we loved and respected. Um, everybody that was there and um, so it was really really strange um, to us that God would be asking us to do this but um, so we had wrestled with this for for months for months um, and we had actually made the decision uh, in January that we're like you know what we're just going to stay and and God was kind of like no that's not (laughs) what I told you to do and so um, he initiated the process um, and t- was like, "Hey, listen, this is this is what I'm asking you guys to do, mm-hmm. and I need you to be obedient to it." And so, um, so in about you know February, we started having the conversations about what it would look like to step down and and all that. And so it was really in this time, and, and especially during the time of, of the quarantine, mm-hmm. um, you know, in March, that God really started to reveal what it is. That he was doing, um, mm-hmm. and so um, really, God has just been giving us like one step at a time, right? You know, and really saying like, "Listen, I, I need you to trust me for everything else, but I'm just going to give you this one step, mm-hmm. and I need you to just do this one thing first. And so He's really just been kind of leading us, yeah, um, along this journey, right, along the way, um, and so He's been just guiding us step by step in all of this. Um, and so, you know, we believe that we have heard God, that he has made his will plain. Mm-hmm. And now we are just waiting for th- that to just come to pass and just, just manifest itself um, yeah. and become the reality that it is, you know. So there's some things that you're still waiting on right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. As we're recording this podcast, there's some things that are just up in the air and you're trusting God and you're taking a, a big step of faith. Yeah. And Dan, I know you're a little bit crazy and you're, you're, you're <laughs> willing to take those big steps, but Amy, I want to hear about how God has spoken to you about this because you guys work together. Yeah. So I feel like he has prepared me for this from when Dan was originally called to be a pastor. 
Yeah. I wasn't expecting that, and that's not mm -hmm. what I really wanted <laughs> for my life. You yeah. know, I never thought I'd be married to a pastor, or, and I I didn't see that as a good thing um, mm -hmm. for our family, and so it wasn't something I wanted. And so God had to reveal to me personally that this was his call, that this was his will. And it took about a year and a half of wrestling with that, realizing my life is about to change completely. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to look like something I never thought it would look like. And just, you know, letting go of what I always envisioned mm -hmm. our family, our life mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. to look like, I had to let that go. And so that was a wrestle, and it took about a year and a half, even financially, for him to work on my heart and be able to trust him to take care of us. And so through all of that, he, I feel like has really prepared me for now this mm -hmm. gigantic leap of faith <laughs> that, um, you yeah. know, we don't have anything in front of us right now. Uh, when Dan was being called into being a pastor, I knew what was in front of us. Sure. I knew where we were going. I knew where his paycheck was coming from. So I did have physical evidence of this is happening. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, all we have is what he has revealed in our hearts, what he has shown us in prayer. And so, but I do feel like he has prepared me. And so in that sense, I feel like all the things that we went through a few years prior you know, he was really good in preparing me in order for this greater ask mm -hmm. of surrender and letting go. I love how God does that. He doesn't tell us the whole picture. He just gives us the next step. And then that next step prepares us for a bigger next step. Mm -hmm. And he builds our faith in that process. He really has. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's just like, you know, we know that this isn't asked of everybody all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it seems really unusual. and But... We just, I don't know, we just want to be obedient to God in everything that he's asked us to do. I think Amy and I, even going into becoming a pastor, you know, when I left my corporate job, when I, you know, we were, we were, you know, we were set. Yeah. We, we really were. We, we had, we had, you know, the American dream, so to speak. But we have always just said, like, one day we will come face to face with God hmm. and we will have to give account for our life. And we just don't want to ever get to that place and say, well, we just didn't want to do it mm. because we didn't want to be uncomfortable yeah. or because we didn't trust you enough or because, you know, we just wanted to do what we wanted to do. Right, right. And we just, after the sacrifice that was made for us and what Jesus Christ really did on that cross for us, like, how could we not fully surrender everything mm -hmm. to him and mm -hmm. just totally say this is really your life now this is no longer our life mm. we don't we don't own this anymore like you bought us with a price and yeah. so now use us for your glory and use us to bring honor to your name and so even though it seems unusual and it's you know far out there i when i look at the bible and I see what God really asks of people, like from in Scripture. Yeah, it's really not. Yeah, you know what I mean. The like is this full is of actually, far out people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually really tame compared yeah. <laughs> comparatively. Right? Some yeah. of the stories. <laughs> yeah, with some of the things. Like if you th really think about Peter mm -hmm. getting out of the boat and walking on water. Like we 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 said that so many times that I think it's you know it's like really watered down like yeah. Sunday school version. But when you actually think about what he he was mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. and stepping out of that boat and stepping on liquid like H two O, you know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't solid. Like it, it, yeah. it, there was waves crashing against the boat. Like this mm -hmm. was a rocky sea. But yet he still got out of the boat and he walked on water. Yeah. And there's only two people who who could ever say that. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Jesus. And one yeah. of them was Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah. But so so God asks us like things that when they're put down on paper don't make a lot of sense right like when when you're really like oh, okay th oh this is what you're doing and, like yeah. and you see people's eyes get real big and like what do you mean <laughs> yeah. we, we've made so many excuses right like well wisdom wisdom mm -hmm. says 
mm-hmm. that we shouldn't do this mm-hmm. or you know what I mean or like you know well you have a family to take care of well yeah but really it's God's responsibility to take care of us in that respect yeah. and so um, we're just doing what we believe God has asked us to do and we're going to be obedient to that it's good you don't know what your next step exactly is or like maybe two or three steps down the road but I know we've talked about what one of the steps that God has in front of you and that's starting a podcast of your own mm-hmm. can you tell me I mean obviously I already know this stuff because we've talked a little bit but can you just tell me what it is that God spoke to you about to start a podcast and what are you trying to accomplish during that for me it um, it started just in my own personal time mm-hmm. with the Lord like reading scriptures that would just pop out at me and I would I would want to share about and there were several times I told Dan like I'm about to go on Facebook live and just share this because I need to get this out you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so for me it just kind of started like that like reading the scriptures and things that were standing out to me that I really wanted to talk about and really wanted to share Mm -hmm. but then Dan and I we're having conversations also here at the house. And a lot of times it was revolving around scripture. Um, but other times it would be things that are going on in the world. And we would just be sitting down having conversations. And every time we would be having these talks, I just kept thinking we should be recording this. Like Mm. we should be recording this. Like this is good conversation that we're having. And it was just always conversation that we would you know, reason together with like, we would go back and forth with each other and he would bring up this scripture and I'd bring up that scripture and be like, well, what about this? And what about that? And so for me, it like helped me see, you know, things from a different perspective. It helped challenge me a little bit, my thought process, it was edifying. And so we really just felt like we want to share this. Like we want to invite other people into these conversations and put this out there and share it with other people. Very cool. Very cool. So you just dropped the name reason together. So Mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that, Dan. Yeah. And so we would, we would just have these amazing conversations just regarding scripture, regarding the Lord and just, you know, even relating it to how we see the world and how we interact with the world and even, you know, major events that are going on Mm -hmm. into the world. And how do we look at those things through you know, a biblical world view. And so we were just really reasoning together through these. And a lot of times Amy see th- sees things different than I do. And, you know, and so we're, so we would come together and we would have these amazing conversations about things and learn different ways in which to process and which to see and which to, you know, be able to articulate. Mm-hmm. And so we would have these really dynamic conversations And it was really at that point where we were starting to think about, like, this is just us reasoning together, like, through the scriptures. And this is how believers should be doing this, Mm -hmm. right? And, like, and so um, we would go to the scriptures and we were looking at Acts chapter 17 where it says Paul went to, you know, Mars Hill. And, you know, he was, he spent three days with them, Mm -hmm. reasoning with them from the scriptures, and it, and even larger than that, right? Like that's what God does with us. Like in Isaiah, He says, "Come now, let us reason together." Mm. Right? And l- though your sins be as scarlet, I'll wash them as white as snow. And so that's the way God interacts with us. He reasons with us, like on yeah. on our level. Yeah. And so that's just what we wanted to do was just develop this podcast. Where it's just us reasoning together at our level, and you know, hopefully, it ministers to people and right. blesses people and gives people a, a, a new perspective, or even just even if it just can teach people on how to have these conversations. Right. Right. Like you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's so countercultural to just sit down and be able to have these you know really civil conversations with one another when we mm-hmm. disagree. Yeah. And so how do we how do we do that as believers? And so that's really, you know, what we want to see happen. Yeah. And bringing it back to the word of God is really important because so much, Amen. especially in this day and age, people are just ruled by their emotions and what they're feeling in the moment. And when the Bible says that we reason together, we're looking at what's happening in our world, what's happening in our marriages, in our family, friends, whatever whatever situation it is, and we reason that together with the word of God. 
not just with between the two of us or the three of us, whatever it might be, but you're reasoning together with God through his word and you're looking at the world through the lens of the Bible. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to bring in that in that podcast in the future. And we're going to have some fun with that. And I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to help you guys a little bit in your journey as we're going along the way with as you're reasoning together. I want to encourage you guys that are listening to this. I will be providing a link in the show notes so that you can listen to Dan and Amy's first episode of Reasoning Together. I'm excited to, or I'm glad that we've had this opportunity to have this conversation and to hear Amy's side of the story, because I'll also provide a link for Dan's episode, which we did back at the very beginning of this along the way journey that I've been on. And I, I'm glad that people were joining me with that. But Amy and Dan, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to join you along your way. Well, thank you, John. Thank you. Seriously, this has been a, a blessing for us. And so thank you very much for all your help and everything that you continue to do. Since we recorded this podcast interview, Dan and Amy accepted a lead pastor position at Westview Community Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, and have moved there to begin the next chapter of their ministry story. They have also officially launched their podcast, Reasoning Together, which I had the privilege of helping them get started with. I miss having them close by, but I know that they are being obedient to God's call on their lives. I have a lot of respect for the steps of faith that they have taken, and I know that God will honor that. I'll be providing a link to their podcast in the show notes. Thank you for listening to Along the Way. If you've enjoyed joining me along my way, please share this with a friend who you think will be encouraged by this episode. Also, please rate and review Along the Way on iTunes. That helps more people discover Along the Way. And subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and at my website, alongtheway.media. I hope that you've enjoyed this part of my journey. And may you realize when Jesus is walking with you along your way. Along the Way is honored to be part of the Charisma Podcast Network. You can find tons of spirit-filled content from their vast catalog of podcasts, including my Monday through Friday news stories for the Charisma News Podcast. Go to cpnshows.com to see the full list and latest episodes.